Good morning, folks, and welcome uh, to our Sunday morning service. And um, I'm in the book of Joshua this morning, Joshua chapter 1. And I want to read a couple sections of scripture out of Joshua, and then we'll give to you what I want to give to you this morning. But Joshua chapter 1, if you've got your Bibles, uh, turn there. And then Joshua chapter 3, Joshua 1 and Joshua chapter 3. But I'm glad you're with us this morning and uh, looking forward to what the Lord has for us today uh, as we uh, look into his word. Uh, if I'm correct, and I think I am, this is the 10th Sunday that we've not been, to, uh, been able to be together because of the coronavirus. And uh, I trust, uh, folks, that you're staying encouraged in the Lord, uh, that you're reading your Bible, you're trying to maybe memorize some scripture right now, but just encouraging yourself in the Lord. And I think that's so important. I know the tendency when we're not together is maybe to, uh, to just get lax on some things, but folks, we can't afford to do that. And so I trust that uh, you're staying in the word of God. I trust that you've been uh, able to view the videos and, and uh, just the preaching of the Bible has been an encouragement to you. And I trust that this message this morning will be an encouraged to you as well. So let me read a couple passages of scripture. I'll say a few things and then I'll get right into the message this morning. Uh, the book of Joshua chapter one, this section that we've looked at before, the message won't be anything that we've done before, but some of the thoughts out of this, uh, these two passages here. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. And and so I, that must have been uh, uh, quite some news that, Joshua got that morning that Moses, the servant of the Lord, was dead. And God said to Moses, now you rise up and you take this people over Jordan. And I don't know that there might not have been some fear in Joshua's life when he got that news. And then he got the instructions that now Moses, the one that had been leading the children of Israel all these years, 40 years through the wilderness, He'd been their leader. He'd been their spiritual leader, their guide. Now, Joshua, I want you to rise up. I want you to finish the job that Moses started. Folks, I can only imagine what must have gone through Joshua's mind at that time. That now, Joshua, you're the one that's going to lead the people. But then you come over to verse 9 in Joshua chapter 1. And the Lord said to Joshua, Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. And that must have been some comforting words to Joshua. Joshua, don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. Don't be discouraged. Because I'm with you, whithersoever thou goest. Wherever you go on the face of the earth, Joshua, I will be with thee. And so a little time passes. We come to Joshua chapter 3. Joshua rose early in the morning, and they removed from Shittim and came to Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host. And they commanded the people, saying, When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, then ye shall remove from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Come not near unto it, that ye may know the way by which ye must go. And here's where I'm taking the title of my message this morning. For ye have not passed this way heretofore. Um, there was... Uh, they were to follow the Ark of the Covenant. Folks, that was, a, uh, that was a representation of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And as you see the ark move, and as the Lord Jesus Christ moves, you move. Now you put a space between you and the ark. And I believe that space was so everybody could see. Folks, they were going to pass away that they had never been before. And they needed to be able to keep their eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. You've not passed this way before. And because you've not passed this way before, you need to make sure that your eyes are on that ark of the covenant. Folks, you and I must keep our eyes on Jesus Christ this morning. Let's pray. Our Father, I pray that you'd speak to our hearts concerning this message that I want to preach this morning, the thoughts that uh, you've given to me in my reading this week. And I pray it would challenge us to search our lives to make sure that our eyes are on Jesus Christ. And we'll thank you for it in his name. Amen. And so, uh, folks, uh, again, this morning and my thoughts have been on what's uh, taking place in our world and uh, especially uh, the things that are taking, a play, around, taking place around us uh, personally. Uh, this coronavirus pandemic uh, that we're going through, uh, I read that uh, this is probably the greatest world crisis since World War II. Certainly it is, I know, in my lifetime, the years that I've been alive on the earth, but since World War II, it said that this is probably the greatest crisis that we face. You folks know, as it turns out, uh, probably shouldn't, uh, uh, our economy shot, probably shouldn't have been shut down as it was. Uh, this is in, in hindsight. When this came out, uh, there was a lot of fear. There was a lot of uh, uh, speculation about what was going to be in hindsight, folks, not probably been as bad as they said it was going to be. But the way the events occurred, it was like the falling of, of dominoes. Uh, once it got stopped, uh, once it got started, there was no stopping it. It's all like just water under the bridge now. But there's been great damage that's been done to the world economy. The repercussions of what's been done. I don't, uh, folks, I don't think that we yet know uh, what will be the reper repercussions uh, what will be the end result of this world shutdown that we've uh, been involved in? We've seen the overreach of government into the lives of citizens. It's moved to new and frightful levels. Uh, folks, as we see what's taking place today, as our government reaches into our lives and our freedoms are being challenged. There's talks of civil war today. There's rioting and famine there's the breakdown of society. And folks, we've seen some of this. You go to the grocery stores today and 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 uh, it's just not like it's always been. You can't get toilet paper. There's certain things you go to get and it's it's out. Uh, we've heard in the last couple of weeks of of, of the meat markets, the um, uh, where they take the meat to be slaughtered and, and, and uh, these places are closing down and and I've been into the grocery stores this week and there's signs that uh, you, you're limited to two items uh, of any one item that you can get. Uh, the whole chicken sections are, are wiped out. And uh, but, but folks, just a breakdown of society. I believe the world is setting up for the rule of the Antichrist. Folks, I believe we're on a trial run just to see how far we can go. Uh, surely the devil would put his man on the throne of this world today, if it not were for the one who with, withholds him. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 7, the Bible says this, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now leteth will let, and he'll be, until he be taken out of the way. Speaking of the Spirit of God, that, 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 that controlling uh, person, the Spirit of God that's in our world today. He holds back the wicked one. But folks, there's going to be a time there's coming when he'll be taken away. At the rapture of the church, the Spirit of God will be taken away. The Christian will be taken away. And then the Antichrist will be free to come on the scene. Folks, I believe we're seeing the trial run of that today. I believe we're seeing 
the far reach of government into a one world system of just how far we can go with shutting everything down. Folks, there's a there's been a pandemic and that's true of a, an infectious disease today. But there's been a pandemic of some other things going on, a highly infectious fear today. And uh, we, we've seen that, folks, and that's taking place uh, in our world right now. Uh, so sure, certainly there's there an infectious fear, uh, this, this, this highly infectious doubt that we have going on today. Just so much, much doubt in our world. There's uncertainty. There's confusion. There's frustration. There are people that are getting angry today, and it's infectious. Folks, these things, uh, just like the disease, these things are spreading, and we see it. Folks are marching on their capitals in our country today, demanding uh, that our, our society be opened back up. We think about for the patriots uh, in America Day, uh, there's an added frustration of seeing our country uh, being take, uh, taken to the brink of ruination today. Uh, folks, literally, uh, our country as we know it uh, is being ruined. Our constitutional liberties are being trampled on. Socialism is on the rampage today. Uh, we have politicians today who are calling good evil and evil good. And folks, that's just Bible. That's what the Bible says it'll be like uh, towards the end of time, uh, that they'll call good evil and evil good. And certainly we're seeing that from our politicians today. The news media today are pushing their own ad agendas rather than reporting what the news really is. The founding principles of our, of our founding fathers uh, are being despised today. So here's the thought. Where do I stand in all of this? Where do we stand in all of this as Christians? What does this crisis reveal about you and I today? What does this crisis reveal about our character, who we are as Christians today? And I was uh, doing some reading today, or, or excuse me, this week, and I come across some questions that I was challenged with. And I want to challenge you with some of these questions and with some other thoughts that I have of my own as well. But uh, let's answer uh, these questions this morning as we go through these. I've got nine or ten that I want to give to you this morning. And um, but let me let me challenge you with some of these questions. Do I really believe that God is in control and that my times are in his hands? That's number one. Do I really believe that God is in control and that my times are in his hands? Uh, folks, we say that all the time. We believe that God is in control. But do I live my life like he's in control? In, da in Daniel chapter 2 and verse 21, the Bible says this, And he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and he setteth up kings. Uh, look at folks, we look at those that are in control today. They're there because God has put them there. Make no mistake about it. He changes the times. He changes the seasons. God is in control of this. In Psalms 31, verse 14 and verse 15. But I trusted in thee, O Lord. I said, thou art my God. My times are in thy hand. Folks, that's what the Bible says. But am I acting like that's true? Are you acting like that's true today? That God is in control? Do I really believe that? Do I believe that my times are in his hands? I knew of a preacher once, and he gave this testimony about being afraid to fly. Had a great fear of flying. He did a lot of public speaking and he was required to, to do a lot of flying. He said every time that he got on a plane, he was just struck with fear. He said, but one, God, one day God spoke to him. He said, you know what? This plane can't fall from the sky unless I allow it to do so. And he said from that moment on, he just settled it in his heart that his times were in God's hand and nothing could happen to that airplane unless God allowed it. And he said this, if God allows it to fall, if it's my time for God to take me home, then I don't want to be on this earth anymore anyway. 
And so it just, uh, that thought that his times were in God's hand and nothing could happen until God said it would. Uh, but folks, are we acting uh, like our times are in God's hands or are we acting like our time is in the government's hand? Well, my time's not in the government's hand. My time is not in the world health organization's hand this morning. Folks, they don't control my times. My times don't belong to Bill Gates. He's been in the news a lot lately. Had a clip sent to me this week and, and he's talking about vaccinations. And you wonder, what in the world does Bill Gates have to do with vaccinations? But there he was on this clip and he was talking about vaccinations and, and it's rather rather startling clip. I'm going to tell you, folks, my time's not in Bill Gates' hands. My time's not in China's hand uh, this morning either. Um, China's in the news a lot lately. But, folks, they don't control my times. My times aren't in the hands of some prominent uh, medical authority today. And, and we see a lot of them on the news today, if you watch. And, and they get on and, and they speak as they've got some great authority Folks, you just go back and look at what they said 10 weeks ago and what they said then is not what they're saying today. And if we go 10 more weeks, they'll be saying something uh, different in 10 more weeks. I'm glad my, my hands, my times are in God's hands and not some medical authority's hands. I'm glad that my hands uh, or my times are not in the banking system today. Uh, folks, that's shaky at best, the banking system. Society today doesn't control my times. God does. Folks, culture may change. That's true, but God doesn't. And my times are in his hands. Folks, my times aren't in the devil's hands today. He's wreaking havoc in our world today. Uh, uh, a lot of things, the perilous times we see today, demonic things taking place. And in all of that, I'm glad that my hands, my times are in God's hands. Let me give you another thing. Let me ask you another question this morning. And I touched on this last week, but I want to touch on it again this morning as well. Are my affections in heaven or on earth? Are my affections in heaven or on earth? In Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4, if ye, thee be, if ye thee be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above and not on things of the earth. And folks, right there it is. Set your affections on things above and not on things of the earth. Folks, where are your affections today? Are they in the heavens? Or are, or are they on things of the earth? And that's a question you and I need to answer. The, the scripture tells us to set our affection on things above and not on things of the earth. The Bible says, for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Oh, listen, folks, you and I need to come to the realization today that I'm dead to myself, but I'm alive to God. And when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall we appear with him in glory. Folks, we need to get our mind off of the things of this earth and get them set on things above. And I said to you last week, somebody said to me one time that you're so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. I reject that, folks. Listen, I'm afraid that we're so earthly minded that we're, so, we're no heavenly good today. We need to set our affections on things above. Where do you have your affections today? Listen, folks, if we get to looking about the situation around us today, we can become very discouraged. So we need to get our affections on things above and not on things of this earth. Let me give you a third thing this morning, a third question that I want to ask you this morning. Do I live as if I'm a citizen of heaven and this world is just a strange land? Do I live as, I'm a, as if I'm a citizen of heaven 
and this world is just a strange land. Oh, listen, folks, the longer I live in this world, the more I realize that I'm just a stranger in this land. My citizenship is in another place. It's in heaven. In 1 Peter 2 and verse 11, dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. In Philippians 3 and verse 20, the Bible says this, for our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. My conversation, my citizenship is in heaven. Folks, do we live as, as, as if we're citizens of heaven? Do we live as, as though we're just a stranger in this world? Uh, the song says this, this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's golden shores. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Folks, more and more that song becomes a reality. The more we live in this world, the more I feel like a stranger in it. It should be that way. Or have we sunk deep into the roots of this world? And I love uh, uh, this world too much. Sort of like Lot's wife loved Sodom too much. You know, God said to, to Sodom, get up, get your family out of here, get your wife, get your children, and don't look back. Well, as they were fleeing Sodom, wife's, uh, Lot's wife, look back and she was turned into a pillar of stone. Listen, you could take life, you could take Lot's wife out of Sodom, but you couldn't get Sodom out of Lot's wife. Folks, I'm afraid that's the way we're living in the world sometimes. What flag are you flying today? Are you flying um, the Buffalo Bills flag? Are you flying the Buffalo Sabres flag or maybe it's the New England Patriots? Well, I might get in trouble for saying that in Buffalo today. But what flag are we flying today? What flag am I flying the highest? We ought to be flag, uh, flying the flag of heaven the highest. In Psalm 60, in verse 4, the Bible says this, Thou hast given a banner to them that fear thee that it may be displayed because of truth. That banner of truth, that flag of heaven today. Oh, we ought to be flying it above every flag today. We ought to be flying it above any other flag of this world. And so what flag are we flying today? Are we living as if we're citizens of heaven? Uh, or are we living as we're at home in this world? Folks, you and I ought to be pilgrims in this world. We ought not be at home in it. Let me give you another question this morning. Do I glory in tribulation knowing that God has a purpose for what I'm going through today? Do I glory in tribulation knowing that God has a purpose? In Romans chapter 5, verses 3, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. Um, folks, that's a tremendous, tremendous statement. That's a searching statement. That statement ought to try our hearts. Paul said, not only so, but we glory in tribulation also. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. And patience, experience. And experience, hope. And hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is spread abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. The word glory in Romans 5.3 is translated re rejoice in Romans 5.2, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice. There's that word glory and rejoice and glory in hope of the glory of God, has the idea of being confident in boasting, in being sure of the glory of God. Folks, we studied uh, Romans chapter 5 oh, about a year ago on Wednesday night. We did a study on that passage. It has the idea of being confident in, 
boasting in, being sure of the glory of God. The glory of God speaks of heaven. We talk about going home to be in, to be in glory. The glory of God, the glory of being in heaven. It's the opposite of being discouraged, being frustrated, being overwhelmed, being cast down, being defeated, being angry. Listen, folks, do I glory in tribulation knowing that God has a purpose for my life? Folks, when tribulation comes, God's just working in our life. He's bringing us along. He's preparing us for the glory that will follow. Folks, whatever tribulation you're going through now, let God work in you what he's trying to accomplish. Let him work in you uh, patience and hope and experience, knowing that, folks, he's just preparing us for what's to come. And so let me give you another one. Am I trusting in God's word and believing his promises in a real and practical way? Am I trusting in God's word and believing his promises in a real and practical way? What do you mean, preacher? Well, I mean this. Do I really believe that all things work together for good to those that love God? That's what Romans 8 verse 28 says. For all things work together for good to them that love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Folks, do you really believe that? You really believe that God works all things together for good? If you do, then we got to look at this situation we're in today and say, God, I might not understand it, but I know this. You're going to work it together for my good. Doesn't mean that everything's good, but he's going to take all things and he's going to work them together for our good. Do I really believe that my times are in God's hands? as we looked at in Psalms 31 and verse 15 a little bit earlier. Do I really believe that? Do I really believe that the Lord is my shepherd? I shall not want. Folks, do you believe that? Psalm 23, uh, maybe one of the most memorized uh, chapters of scripture in all the Bible. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Do I, li do I believe that? Do I live like I believe it? That the righteous is not forsaken, nor does his seed beg bread in Psalms 37 and verse 25. Do you really believe that? Do I really believe that God will never leave me nor forsake me? And I know some of you folks, you've been cooped up in your house, especially some of our older folks in our congregation. Uh, maybe some of you have not left the house since all this started. Maybe you're getting to a place where you feel a little bit lonely. Oh, be assured in the fact that God said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Is this my testimony? Is this your testimony? Is this what others see and hear in me? Or am I doubting this morning? Am I fearing this morning? Have I gone into a place of complaining Am I confused about what's going on? Have I got frustrated? Am I acting like the unsaved world around me? Am I trusting God's word? Am I believing his promises in a practical way? Um, ask yourself that question this morning. Oh, folks, don't, uh, don't fall into this, this trap of complaining and being confused and frustrated. And, 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 and fall into the trap of acting like the unsaved world around me. No, no. Trust God's word. Believe his promises. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Let me ask you a sixth thing this morning. Am I truly seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness? Or do, or do other things have first place in my life? Um, I want to read you a rather lengthy passage uh, this morning out of Matthew chapter 6. Ask you the question again and then read you the passage. Am I truly seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness? Or do other things have first place in my life? Matthew chapter 6 and verse 25. 
therefore I say unto you, take no thought, uh, thought for to your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? Behold the fowl of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. <clears throat> Folks, uh, this morning, uh, we're, we get concerned about a lot of things. We get worried about a lot of things. But God says, don't worry about those things. Hey, look, at, if I can feed the sparrow, I certainly can feed you. If I can... Uh, clothe the lilies of the field, I certainly can clothe you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And folks, there it is. It's not that we don't have need of these other things. We do. We can't exist without them. But God says, seek me first. And if we'll seek God first in his righteousness, he's promised to add all of those other things to us. And so folks, let's, let's make that our habit today. Seeking God's God first, seeking his kingdom first, seeking his righteousness first. And as we do that, folks, are we doing that? And that's the question. Are we seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness? And folks, if we'll do that, God has promised that all of those other things that we need, that he'll add them to us. So let's make sure this morning that that is what we're doing. And then, folks, uh, let me give you a, a seventh thing this morning. Can I truly say with Job this? Look at what Job said in Job chapter 1 and in Job chapter 2. Job said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And then in chapter 2 and verse 10, Job said, that, said this, What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? Folks, God has been good to us. He's blessed us. All the song says, count your many blessings, name them one by one. And I don't have this time this morning to start counting our many blessings. But Job said, I came into this world, I didn't have anything. And I'll go out of this world and I won't have anything. What, shall we receive good at the hand of God? And God has been good to us. And shall we not receive evil also? Folks, it rains on the just and on the unjust. And I'm convinced, folks, with all my heart that God is doing something. I'm convinced, folks, that, that we're seeing the forerunners of things to come. And folks, is man turns his back more and more against God. We're going to see more and more things happening on the earth. And folks, you and I live here. And some of these things will fall upon us as well. But uh, we don't need to be discouraged about those things. Can we say with Job, what? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil as well? We ought to be able to say that to folks. And, and so no matter what comes, that ought to be our, our attitude today. And then let me give you another thing. Can we say this with Habakkuk? Look what Habakkuk said um, in, in uh, chapter 3, in verse 17. 
Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall the fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olives shall fail, the fields shall yield no meat, the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Well, Habakkuk, it's, he's describing a terrible time. I believe he's describing a time of famine. I mean, he's d d describing a time when the, the fruit of the field shall be cut off. Uh, when, when the animals, uh, there'll be no, no herds in the stall. There'll be no, no meat to eat. But Habakkuk said this, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Folks, are we, are we joying in God today? Oh yeah, there's a pandemic out there going on. There's... There's unsettling things happening in our world today. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Oh, look at folks. If it all falls apart today and it all just goes away, we don't have anything else. You and I can rejoice in our salvation. That know, folks, that when this life is over, that we'll go home to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. And what a comfort we can take in that today. Let me give you a night uh, thing this morning. What does this crisis show about us? Does this crisis show that I truly do not love this world? Does this crisis show that I truly do not love this world? Listen, folks, the things of this world ought not be able to hook themselves to us and hold us back. Does this crisis show that I'm not conformed to this world? Does this crisis show that I'm not the friend of this world? Am I anxious about the closing down of the vain things like the professional uh, sports of this world? Do those things have me anxious today? How many of you have looked yesterday? How many of you have already looked this day? Hey, have they given us an opening date yet for professional football? Uh, for the NBA, for the hockey season. We've talked about some of these things in the past. But listen, folks, um, uh, does this crisis show that I'm truly not in love with this world? I'm not in love with the things of this world? Am I worried about what might happen to my worldly plans? What are your plans today? Oh, um, I know some of you have, have been to college and and you've graduated uh, this year and you, you weren't able to go to your graduation. Che uh, Esther wasn't able to attend her graduation. And I know some of you others have not able uh, to attend your graduations. And, but, and, and I understand the hurt in some of those things. And, and maybe you're being held back a little bit. But folks, don't be conformed to this world. Don't be conformed to the plans of this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. In Romans 12 in verse 2. In 1 John 2 in verse 15 and verse 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It's not of the Father, but it's of the world. Folks, don't let the plans of the world be what gets us down because we're not able to perform them. In James 4 and verse 4, we've been looking at that uh, on, Wednesday, on Wednesdays in our uh, uh, Wednesday Bible study. The adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. So what does this crisis show about us? Folks, I hope that it shows that we're not a friend of this world. We're not tied to it. The things of this world have not hooked themselves to us. But we can live without them. And then I'm going to give you one more uh, this morning uh, before we close. How are we spending our time during quarantine? And what does it say about my Christian character? The tenth thing. How are we spending our time during this quarantine? And what does it say about our Christian character? If I use the time to immerse myself in prayer, in the word of God and his ministry, folks, we've, 
you, uh, most of you right now, anyway, most of you, I know some of you have lost your job, and I'm praying for you. Uh, but you've got more time on your hands right now than you ever have before. Have you been reading your Bible? Have you been studying the Word of God? Have you been using this time to maybe memorize some extra scripture? How am I spending my time during quarantine? What does that say about the character that I have? Uh, uh, we've challenged you in the past about Bible reading. And I've heard some of you say, well, we just don't have time to spend two hours a day in reading the Bible. And I agree with you. Maybe you've not in the past. But what about now? You've got more time now than you've ever had before to spend in God's Word. I found time to do special Bible projects, such as reading and memorizing. Have I spent the time encouraging others in the Word of God and helping them think right about this crisis that we're in right now? And folks, each and every one of us, you can get on the phone. And folks, when you do that, don't get on the phone to gossip. Get on the phone to encourage other people about God, about what's taking place, about thinking right about this crisis. Oh, I've had the opportunity to go on and, and, and put messages on um, uh, the video and, and what a blessing that's been. Well, I'm telling you, Kevin's been a blessing to me at this time. He's called me up and said, Preacher, I've got a message. If, if you'd like, I'll come over and put it on the video. Try to be an encouragement to people. Oh, listen, that's what I'm talking about, folks. We spent time trying to encourage others. And you may have to get uh, um, creative in how to do that. But you can do that. You can text. And those of you that have social media, go on there and be an encouragement on social media. Put out Bible verses and, and how God is speaking to your heart and how God is supplying for your need. And just put that out there. It might be an encouragement. Uh, how are you spending your time during quarantine? And what does it say about the character that we are as Christians? Have I been spiritually depressed? Have I been idle? Have I been playing and wasting time on social media uh, for no good purpose? See, if you're going to use social media, use it for a good purpose. Be careful what you put out there. Folks are watching. They're watching what you say. They're watching what you do. Use it to be an encouragement to others. Don't be slothful in our business, folks. Let's be fervent in our spirit, serving the Lord, as it says in Romans 12 and verse 11. And so, folks, don't be dismayed. Don't be discouraged. The Lord is with you. Moses, the servant of the Lord, is dead. Now, Joshua, you get up, rise up. You lead this people uh, into the promised land. And by the way, keep your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ because you've not passed this way before and we need to keep our eyes on Christ. And I trust that's what you're doing today. I trust that uh, you're keeping your eyes on Jesus. You're staying encouraged in the Lord. And I want to encourage you this morning, folks, if I can be of a help to you, Please don't hesitate to contact me. You can call me on the phone. Uh, you can text me. Reach out to me. Uh, we'll do whatever we can for you. If you're watching this video this morning and you don't yet know the Lord, I trust today be your day of salvation. If I can help you with that, please don't hesitate to call. You can get our uh, contact information on our website. And I look forward to hearing from you soon. Lord bless. And I trust you'll have a great rest of the day.